So he came uh, last August. Okay. His so first time. First time. Yep. Yeah. In in Texas, in the states, and uh, one of the things was just how big everything was. You know, the highways, the trucks, just really you just. Get the uh, irony of a guy who's seven plus feet. So right. How big everything is. Right? Yeah. So I mean, I, I took him to the John F. Kennedy, uh, you know, the museum, kind of just to sightsee and stuff like that, and he was just just amazed by yep. how everything was just bigger and. Not bigger and better in Texas, but you know, bigger in general and everything. He's not hitting his head as he walk, he's walking. Oh, he was head. doing that. He's still, yeah. He was doing that. Cause you know, I mean, at seven five, I mean, you ducking just in apartment buildings and elevators, wherever he's at, he's just getting low. So it helps with his uh, defensive stance. That's what I would say. <laughs> you gotta get low, get used to it, man. Drop those hips, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, what were, so how long was he here for? A couple of weeks? Yeah. Yeah, so he, he, was he like at different games. And stuff. He was at yeah, he was here for about uh, actually going on like three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah, so about 20, 21 days. Was he staying at your place? Or was he... Nah, so he he was staying at the hotel like closest to the airport. <laughs> but he he came by a few yeah. nights and hung out, so it was real cool just well, to be able to chop it up. Well, I mean, Spurs probably obviously. Mm -hmm. um, what were his impressions of Texas? Oh, he loved it. Really? He loved the people. I think you know, obviously being from Texas, you get that southern hospitality, uh, but. I think he just loved just he was enamored by everything just from the buildings the architecture you know the the taste of the cuisine and um just sightseeing was was super unique to him so i know he, he loved it he can't wait to get back i'm sure he'll have no trouble putting on pounds if he needs to. oh no so I, I told him stay away from whataburger stay away from you know chick-fil-a because we got all these fast food places you know every no. time you exit a, off the highway you're eating at something so does he feel good about San Antonio? I mean, I'd imagine Pop is probably, you know, you think about Tim Duncan having a yeah. long time career. And I don't know. Has, oh, is yeah. he pumped about the Spurs? Is he? Nah, man, he's he's ecstatic. That's the best word I could use to describe it. He's, uh, I think he's just, he's he was so focused this year. Um, you know, they just recently lost in the finals uh, to Monaco, but I think it was very meaningful to him being able to just play his last year in Paris with, in front of his family and friends, and then now coming to Texas with a guy like Pop and, and just the tradition in its own right, you know, having the five rings and- um, Tony Parker, fellow Frenchman who played there. Yeah, and then you there. also had Yam Mahimi. Yep. Um, I think Mikhail Petris also from France played out over there uh, or had a stint with the Spurs. So I think overall, man, he's just excited just to be in Texas in a smaller market, just so he could get more familiar with you know people in the organization in the city in the community and so it was just I think it was just the basketball guys that aligned it to, to make it happen it's gonna be pretty cool to get to see him I mean play the Mavs yeah twice in yep. Dallas every year yeah you know you being based here are you excited for that and that he's not gonna oh man you don't have to travel as far necessarily to see him play yeah, I'm, well, we was actually in uh, at the draft combine in Chicago when they did the lottery and the announcement. And I was in this uh, little like sports bar when they announced that they got the number one pick. And I was just jumping for joy, like like a little kid, you know, and I was so happy, not just for him, but also for our family, you know, um, and just everybody that has been involved in this process with his agent, Buna, you know, he lives out here in Dallas. And I think it just makes it more convenient for all of us. And then also, you know, San Antonio is a phenomenal organization yeah. as well. So, I mean, it's what only four, three, four hours. Yeah. From yeah, it's like right down the Pop street. Down anytime you need to. Yep. And San Antonio is yeah. a cool town. Yeah. You go to the Riverwalk. You know, nice uh, golf resorts. Oh, that's you know, right. yeah. so, TBC San Antonio. Yeah, that's right. They got some stuff out there. Um, take me back to mm -hmm. where it all began with him, um, mm -hmm. specifically. How did y'all connect? And then mm -hmm. how does that relationship get fostered? Yeah. Uh, so it was 2019. Um, I was working with Rudy Gobert. And, you know, Rudy has the same agent with Boone and Jai and Jeremy. Um, same agency as Victor. The French Connection. Yeah, the French Connection. That's where it all started. So uh, his agent, Jeremy, was telling me, he's like, Tim, we got a player we want you to start working with. Uh, this is at the All-Star game. So we're in Chicago. And he tells me, Tim, uh, we got a, a up and coming player. You know, he's going to be very special. You know, you kind of hear that all the time, you know, when you're working with up and coming players. I was like, well, let me, I don't want to see highlights. I want to see the whole game. Yeah. And then I want to know more about who is he 
off the court? You know, what are some of his hobbies or his interests? And so he's just like, look, just remember the name, Victor Wimbenyama. So I was like, all right, this is cool. So now fast forward to like 2020, uh, we do a Zoom call, like an introduction. And we just instantly kind of hit it off. It was like a natural synergy that as a trainer or a player, you don't always have. But it was just fascinating to see how he viewed life and, and just how inquisitive he was about some of the nuances that I love to teach, the, the, the details. And so from that Zoom call, uh, right after that, COVID happened. And so unfortunately, I wasn't able to get to, to France and meet him personally. So we had to start doing uh, some workouts via Zoom. And that's where it kind of got interesting. Yeah, probably like in year two, year three, he'll, he'll gain at least probably 20 pounds. Like a Giannis deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it takes time. Dirk had to go through that. He wasn't bony when he came in, but you know, now you look at Dirk and you got one of these, baby. <laughs> so when we first started working out, I didn't even know what Zoom was. You know, I, I just heard it was an app or like an online thing you could use. Um, so we had to figure out a way to, to actually do a workout. So we had to get pretty creative. So all the gyms were closed at that time. And I went to go Colleyville, like by Colleyville Heritage, the high school, they had a tennis court. So I would drive all the way over there and we would have to structure it to where it was like 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. for me. Yeah. And it was like, what, 5 p.m. in Paris time. And you know, out here in Dallas, it gets hot quick. So I had about an hour of time before the, the laptop would start overheating or before I would pass out. Uh, and I would demonstrate the drill in the laptop. You know, we would both have air, earphones and I would show him like his footwork. This is a footwork drill we're gonna do. And then I would have him make sure, like I would have him show me the footwork drill just to make sure he would comprehend what I was doing. And then I would just watch him through the uh, laptop as he was getting his reps. And I would just talk to him as he was getting his shots up through, through the earpiece. These custom drills that you put guys through, mm -hmm. where do they come from? Like, are they just things you've learned over the years? Things you've pulled from different guys? Mental, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm curious kind of what created your base of you should do this, you should do that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think uh, really it's off of feel. You know, my cousin Fred, he taught me a lot of that of, you know, you always have to bring energy. That's the first thing in every workout I always try to bring is energy and making sure that, you know, it's, it's very high tempo, um, very energetic um, drills. And then secondly, it's more of, of feel. So I'll have a, a particular theme. Usually we always start with footwork and with Victor, it was, you know, he played soccer a little bit so that was the, the easiest way for him to uh, want to focus on what drills we were working on, you know, and putting more emphasis on, you know, maybe how he would step uh, on his crossovers, maybe stepping into his jump shot. And we would build from the footwork into his hips, you know, his mobility with his chest, making sure his posture was correct um, on as he's going up for his jump shot or what have you and really just building off of that and structuring um, workouts through that. What do you feel like he's developed the most with you? Like what parts of his game have you seen maybe over the last three, four years where it's like, oh, that's kind of a Tim thing. It mm -hmm. helps him do this. You know, not necessarily the whole complexity of it, but yeah. things where you're like, I played a role in that. I would say, man, really just uh, his overall perspective. That's one thing that I love about Victor particularly is his curiosity. You know, guys like Tyrese Maxey, Trey Young, they all kind of share that, that element of curiosity to where they ask a lot of very detailed questions. And so for me, already kind of being eccentric myself, um, we have great conversations. So it's not me lecturing these guys. I'm also extracting feedback and just saying, hey, what, what makes you feel more comfortable in this scenario? Or if you're posting up, how do you like to catch the ball? And I think ultimately for Victor, his mid post game, you know, is something that I was very prevalent in, in trying to teach him in the very beginning of, of his development is like, hey, the mid post, you look at all the great scores, Jordan, Kobe, Dwayne Wade, who's another mentor of mine, taught me a lot about the mid post. And it's, it's kind of secondary to where the game is now, where everybody's shooting threes or getting to the rim, but you gotta be able to impose your will, especially at that size early on inside or even on the perimeter, you know, being able to be aware of your shot selection. So I think perspective is something that we talk about and I wanted to address very early on in his development. We're very big on the game happens before the game starts. You know, so your, your, your mental visualizations before the game, 
what are you thinking about? How are you also thinking about overcoming some of these obstacles? Because I've never seen a player go 20 for 20 from the field or have a perfect game. That's just, you're going to have a turnover. You're going to miss some shots. You're going to just maybe not even have a feel or maybe in the first quarter, you know, you may not mentally be engaged. So working on the things that you can control before the game to also uh, create that mental callus, to be mental tough, you know, going into the playoffs. That's another thing a lot of these guys will experience. And hopefully for Victor, you know, in his first few years in the league, he'll be able to get to that, to that feet. Okay, so you- really, most of the time, when we're outside of the gym, when we're working out, we don't even really talk about basketball. So, and it allows me to be able to be a better trainer to find different analogies or metaphors, if you will, to, to be able to get him to connect to the development process. So if, he, if we're talking about the French Revolutionary War, I'm able to connect something of, of, from the war to the game of basketball, you know, and we just get along. Like even if he didn't play basketball, I could consider him a good friend just because of who he is and, and kind of who I am. I think we just connect with just being two curious individuals trying to get better. And so when did it become like a consistent thing? Like, so you started doing the Zoom stuff. When did it uh-huh. develop to, all right, I'm flying out or you're flying in? When did it kind of morph into that next, next Yeah, step? so we, we were uh, going about three to four days a week throughout that whole summer during COVID. Um, going into the years, I'll do f- more film breakdown. And we developed a great uh, long distance relationship through that form of communication. And then I went to Lyon 2021, to Lyon, France. So that's when he um, just signed his first contract with Osvel, uh, Tony Parker's team. And I would go out there and that's when I first met him in person was, uh, I want to say April of 2021. And then from there, just going back and forth uh, to France like two or three times a year. Um, well, that's when we really started buckling down and getting some work in. Wow. Um, as guys develop a higher profile, mm-hmm. I'd imagine there are more people trying to latch yeah. on. Mm-hmm. Um, what about you or your relationship allowed you guys to kind of stay consistent and not necessarily, you know, have to deal with some of that? And I'm sure there yeah. is some dealing with that, but guys will change trainers, they'll change agents, yeah. they will, you know, it's who's in their ear. Um, how did you guys kind of stay the course? Um, I think I think it's it's a huge, it's a very different dynamic dealing with international players as opposed to the American player mm-hmm. for, for, for various reasons. A lot, of, a lot of people in the American players' ears yeah. versus overseas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's, it's just the, the different dynamic is just the access to. There's so many people that have access here to players um, that go through the circuit. You know, they get with these kids early on in the grassroots and then in college or even in the NBA and, and relationships change as more of the norm nowadays. Um, on the international space, you can see like Jokic just won the, the NBA championship and all you see is him with his brothers. It's a little bit more family oriented um, and it's a, it's a uniqueness in it because our relationship is, is usually building off of trust, right? And so over the period of time building trust, uh, there comes a sense of loyalty in that. And that's something that's sacred to me, especially in this business or even for him as a player. And I think that that dynamic kind of just organically builds um, into a great relationship, a great working relationship on and off the court. And that's something that we've been able to, to do. And so now with him having success, it's been phenomenal for him, his family, his friends. And it's, it's cool for me to be behind the scenes and just cheering them on. Does he have like a, a, a comparable in terms of personality? Like who is he similar to that's in the league? That's, that's a great question. Nobody's like Vic. No, I don't, I don't take basketball away, just him as an individual. I always use uh, Russell Crowe in The Beautiful Mind, that movie. Mm-hmm. That's Victor. Somebody that's just, there's many layers uh, to his personality, but it's just, he's, like, he's almost like he's been here before. He's got an old spirit, and, and it's phenomenal to see his growth over these last few years of us working together. Um, he's 19 years old, but you think you're talking to like a 40-year-old man. He's, he's so wise beyond his years. Yeah, there, there'll definitely be a little bit of a culture shock, but I think because he's he's open-minded, it'll it'll be an easy transition from that standpoint. Um, I think the ultimate challenge for him is just going to be playing 82 games. I don't care who you are, um, whether you're coming from college, high school, overseas. Um, 
it, it's a challenge because you're different with different, you're dealing with different time zones. You know, you may play the Knicks one night and then have to fly out the next morning to, to LA. And then you got to deal with the time difference. Um, so I think the 82 games is going to be a challenge along with the media attention, but that's, that's natural, you know, um, and he understands that the expectation level, which is never going to be higher than what he sets for himself. So um, he's got a great support system around him to, to keep him grounded and, and level. And he's always about the work. He doesn't pay attention to the outside noise. You told me the story about Bass Pro. Yeah. What, what um, kind of first were you able to be a part of with him when he, he made his trip over to Texas for the first time? Yeah, so we, we, we did some things uh, off the court. You know, my cousin, uh, he's a big fisherman, so uh, took the guys fishing, and it was a group of, of the French players. I'm just trying to imagine Vic in like a bucket hat. Like yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. It's a good look. It's a good look. He's, he's a natural fisherman, so he's a natural at anything he does. But uh, we had a good time, you know, showed him some different uh, cuisines and stuff of what Texas has to offer. You know, you can't come out here and not eat, so that's a part of it. But, yeah, we had a great, great time. What did uh, he enjoy the most, you think, on his trip? Was it, be it food, activity? I think uh, what was fun for him was just the sightseeing. You know, it's 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 literally like you know, as a kid in Europe, you're you're seeing all these American movies and the the, the big city lifestyle or what have you. Um, but him just coming over here, just seeing the highways, how everybody has a big truck. You know, you go to France and everybody's got like these small Mini Coopers yeah. or smaller cars. Yeah. yeah, and everybody's got like a semi truck out here in Texas. So <laughs> I think he was like, hmm, I could get used to this, but the spacious aspect of it. Yeah. Do you think that curiosity will help as well? Just instead of treating it as a being overwhelmed, he'll lean into it and he'll like he'll want to learn more about these different places and cultures oh, yeah. and how not every state is the same. Yeah. And no. he probably knows it from afar, but Yeah, he him just being curious and and Victor loves to learn. And I know that with just his personality, especially being in San Antonio, I mean, just all the rich tradition and history of the Alamo and stuff like that, um, he'll be fascinated to be able to tap into that to that market, you know. Um, but I think overall, it's just he loves learning, and he equates learning with progress. And as long as you're progressing, you know, as an individual, that's kind of always a good feeling. So I think that'll just be natural for who he is when he gets here. What's his counterbalance? What kind of keeps him level? He like looks like he loves fashion yeah um what 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 are those sort of hobbies or things that yeah. are unique to him maybe um well I, I, I know he loves spending time with his family you know his family is very important to him um and supporting others you know in his family his sister plays basketball along with, with his brother and so any anytime he could share those experiences with with them um he loves doing that and Really, he's just, you know, just like any other average 19-year-old kid, you know, likes to listen to his music or, um, you know, hang out with his friends. And so I think uh, when he gets out here, he'll, he'll definitely be able to have that good balance. Who's, who are his favorite artists these days? Who's he listening to? Man, he loves some French rappers that he's I do not French know. Rap? Yeah. yeah, but he, he, he like, like the J. Coles or some of the, these other guys, I'm, I'm kind of disconnected from the, the newer generation music. I'm old school. I like the Marvin Gaye and Al Green kind of guys. Yeah. So. You, get, you culturing him up on, on that? On, on Sometimes he's actually teaching me about some things. Okay. It's like I'm stuck in the 80s. That's kind of my <laughs> thing. You know what I mean? So he's, he's more of the new age kind of new breed uh, generation. What do we think of his fashion, his, uh, his style? I think it's, it's not bad. Okay. You know, I'm not a hater. It's a hell of an endorsement. It's not yeah, bad. Yeah. Now, his fashion is good. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think for him, I, being young, yeah. he's, he's always going to know it's trendy, you know, whether it's the sunglasses or... Don't ask us old guys. We don't know. Yeah. Dude, we, I, we don't know what's cool anymore. I wear a polo and khakis. That's where I'm at. I'm an old Navy kind of guy. Baggy jeans. I thought they were forever. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, they're back. <laughs> right. Um, what right. is his uh, family dynamic? You mentioned that he's mm -hmm. close with them. Um, what's their backstory? Um, like what they do? What's their, um, you know, that, that kind of relationship and bond like? Yeah, so his, his mom uh, was a former basketball player and coach. And so she's got a, a great basketball mind already. And his dad was a former uh, track athlete. And so I think just teaching him the, the fundamentals of actually running and sprinting and just um, the nuances 
even the things that he's taught me about, you know, just posture and, and how you lift your knees up when you're running. Um, I think that helped with Victor's coordination at a very early age. And so um, they're just two of the best people you could ever meet. Victor's patience is a virtue in its own right, just because he's not trying to speed up his process. He's not trying to cheat the grind. Um, he also allows himself to work through certain failures and, and overcomes those obstacles. Um, you know, he's a Capricorn. So I'm, I'm big on astrology just in general because I'm dealing with so many different personalities. But uh, for Vic, when he starts something, he, he's not going to just move on to the next thing until that one thing is done. And so I think also being a perfectionist, you know, he, he wants to get things right. And just his overall work ethic is what separates him from a lot of, a lot of players. As crazy as this may sound, I don't, uh, he doesn't pay attention to it. Um, I think it's, it's human nature to hear some, certain things from time to time, but um, in his approach, he's so disciplined. And again, he's got a great support staff around him uh, with his agency and his parents and everybody involved. But I think for him, it's just controlling what you can't control, you know, because at the end of the day, the media and everybody's going to have their own say. They're going to try to, you know, put their own expectations on them. But for him, it's just like, well, regardless of what they think, I still got to get the job done. I still got to do my work. You know, I still have to, to carry myself in a professional manner. And you're always going to have naysayers. You're always going to have the haters or, or the people that are going to congratulate you on every little thing along your way. So I think him just also having that sense of maturity because of his upbringing, he doesn't, he doesn't you know, get too involved in all of that extra stuff off the court. Um, and that's, again, that, that's what part of his greatness already at an early age is just because he, he wants to be great, but for himself, not for others. Has he expressed to you what his goals are, what he wants to accomplish, what he hopes to be down the road? Yeah, he definitely wants to be one of the greats, um, but it's not so much predicated to basketball. You know, I think it's very meaningful for him to be the best version of himself, you know, as, a, as an individual, you know, and that's all you could ask for anybody, you know, especially as a parent with my son, you know, I just want him to be a good person. And same thing with Victor or anybody else. Um, he, he takes ease to that and he loves, you know, supporting others. Like I said, supporting his family and, and seeing other people around him have wins as well. So sharing those experiences, I think, is, is going to allow him to be just a great overall well-rounded individual. What gets him talking? Like if he's, is he outgoing, reserved? What's his personality? What kind of gets yeah. him actively engaged? Um, that's a good question. I would have to actually think about that more. Um, he's already, it's kind of, it's weird, man. He, he's so engaged already. It's like when he wakes up, the, the switch is on mm -hmm. and he just knows how to be a chameleon. He knows how to um, adapt in any environment that he, he's in or even in a conversation. You could be talking really about anything and he'll know a little something about it, you know, nine times out of 10, so. Just kind of yeah, he, he's, he's like a, a, a big chameleon. That's the best way I could describe him. He knows how to just blend in. Did you just create his nickname? Is he the the big, big chameleon? You know what? We could go with that. Yeah, we got Wimby, the big chameleon. The big chameleon. That's a good like one. That. Yeah. It's good. good start. Hey, we can yeah. trademark it. Trademark it. Let's yes. copyright it. Action. <laughs> I think the one thing you can uh, expect from Victor is he's always going to give his best. And I mean that sincerely with just everything that he does. Um, he's very... Um, thought provoking, you know, for himself, he, he, he thinks things through. Um, and he's just, he's a very mature kid, you know, and I think when you say, is he gonna give his best, there's nothing that you ever have to question. You know, he gives his best in anything, whether it's making his bed, you know, or getting up shots every day. You know, he, it's always about giving him his maximum effort. And that's just the crest and testament again to, to who he is overall. Not related to basketball, but over these four years that you guys have known each other. Mm -hmm. What certain conversations have stuck with you the most? Maybe blown you away. Mm -hmm. That doesn't have to be maturity, but just it could be something funny. It could be um, thought provoking. Mm -hmm. Just moments where you're like, wow. And wow, not in just the yeah. sense of this kid's different, but also wow, and I really like this guy. Yeah. Probably, you know, there, there was a few times where things would just stand out just his mannerisms you know obviously his 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 spirit he's got a like an old spirit so to speak but I think one thing that really stood out was one time uh he had told me that words cast spells and he's like you got to watch what you say and how and how you say it and, and 
you know, the, the positive affirmations of, of what you say can come true, you know, and that really stuck out because I'm a firm believer of manifesting certain things with, you know, the things that I had to create in my personal life uh, to get to this point. But I think for him to understand at 19 years old and 19, how powerful your words are, mm -hmm. you know, how you speak, how you carry yourself and what tend to carry on in what you believe in. And so I think that's the biggest thing that really stood out to me is like, yo, this kid, he's, he's definitely serious about everything um, around him. There won't be off the court issues. I mean, oh no. He's only 19. You never yeah. Know, but um, is that something that some people should prepare for? Because guys enter the league, it's a whole new lifestyle and yeah. way of life uh, and more money than they could ever dream of when they're five years old. So yeah. how's he going to handle all of that? Um, I think it, it, you know, being around a lot of these these kids and seeing them become pros, uh, it always comes down to really one thing: is your circle. You know, making sure that you you have a great management group around you, which he does. He has the best in the business, and I don't think that's going to be an issue, especially with international players. I don't know, and I could be wrong, but I don't know any international players that have really gotten in trouble off the court. You know, it's. It's just a different way of, of upbringing, you know, as opposed to a lot of Americans, um, you know, typically have some issues on and off the court uh, at times, you know, but I think it's just a process for everybody is just going to be different, you know, but for him, there, there won't be problems. Is he going to be homesick, do you think? It's going to be weird not being, you know, living in Paris for the majority of, your, of the year? Yeah, I think, uh, I, don't, I don't think that'll be an issue. You know, I know he'll miss some of his family and friends in Paris, but I know, um, you know, he's a constant professional. So his approach already is, is getting his mind right for the season and, and accomplishing the goals that, you know, he's always dreamt about, which is being in the NBA and competing against the best. Uh, he'll definitely have his focus and attention on that. You know, once the season comes, he'll be locked in. How many times did you go over there to train him? Uh, total, I think probably about six to eight times. You know, so a few weeks at a time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always been a, a great experience. And, you know, I love Europe. So I love going over there and sightseeing and going to different cathedrals or just checking out some museums and stuff like that. It was, it was really cool. So it's kind of a shared thing, you know, if you're getting yeah. to experience something else, then he comes here and you get to show him a little yeah. place to Texas. I always trying to find an excuse to go over there. So <laughs> that's, that's the good thing. <laughs> I know it. I think it, in, in certain instances, it does hit me um, when I'm around my family. Like, I know I had a, a moment where I was with my cousin where I was in tears um, when we was at the draft combine. And it just, it's a sense of gratitude more than anything. You know, I've, I've dealt with a lot with my upbringing and my, my story, but I think uh, just, just the gratitude of the opportunity to work with a player like him, you know, uh, Buna Njai and, and his agency, they gave me an opportunity to work with a great player. And um, I just, I don't, I don't take that for granted. And I think I don't allow it to, to deter my future from a standpoint of, of just getting caught up in, you know, the hype or anything like that. It just makes me, if anything, motivates me to work even that much harder. So I don't really take too much time to say, oh, we made it or. You're so, you're, you're so fearful of the complacency. Yes, yeah. yes. And that's something that drives me. And, and with the expectations for him, I just want to make sure that I'm even growing and getting better as a, as a trainer and as a coach um, to where I could continue to assist and, and be of value, you know, and to make myself useful to not just help him, but some of the other guys we got coming up, you know, that are still trying to reach their dreams. So um, I'm just I'm just grateful just to be even in this in this process with him and his group and, and to see him have success. That's probably been the most rewarding thing out of all of this is just seeing his growth on and off the court and, and knowing that next Thursday or this upcoming draft, you know, he's going to walk across the stage and his dream will now be a reality. For you personally, mm -hmm. and your goals, um, you know, what, what do you feel like is next to accomplish? I mean, this feels like quite of a mountaintop. But mm -hmm. The problem with mountaintops is you got to go back down. So how yeah. do you keep kind of scaling up and finding the next summit? Um, well, I, th I think at this stage in my career, um, I got a great sense of purpose for myself, you know, and that's always going to be helping others and empowering others. You know, I try to view myself as a vessel 
And so there's not gonna be ever a destination for me. There's not gonna be a sense of I made it. It's always gonna be an ongoing journey to where, okay, hey, we made it here. Okay, what's next? What else can we accomplish? Because if anything, it just gives you more confidence to shoot for the moon and, and continue to just take it to another level that you may not even be able to fathom or comprehend. You know, you hear, always hear guys say, dream big. But now it's just like, you know, there's nothing that you can't do and anything is possible. That kind of behavior for me, I'm always trying to see, you know, how can we set the bar a little bit higher each time. Do you have a, like some big dream or goal that you're, that you consider, thought about, re or are striving for? Is there something that has been yeah. in your mind? I've always wanted to coach in the NBA. So, you know, hopefully one day that'll, that'll be a reality for myself. Um, but outside of that is owning my own ranch. I've always wanted to have a ranch and almost like a mental health rehab facility um, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I always thought that would be cool where we have horses and, and cows and chickens running around, but we also have a, like a sanctuary, you know, a nice gym where people could fly in and, and really kind of get away and disconnect from society for a minute and be able to just kind of gather themselves and, you know, have a, a check-in moment internally, you know, but the, the ranch is definitely the, the goal later on down the line. So a retreat? Yeah. Kind of thing. Yep. Like as a coach, a head coach? Um, just to be a coach? Yeah, just, just I don't know if I'd want to be a head coach, uh, just because of what comes with it. That's a, it's a huge demand. Um, but if it's in my cars later on down the line, you know, I, I think it would be a great opportunity. Um, but I, I love assisting. I love being an extra set of eyes or just really being an asset to people. You know, I think that's my niche and just helping develop players, not just on the court, but the human development aspect. I really enjoy seeing people mature because of our conversations or, you know, just create new perspectives. This draft is so loaded with guys from here. Mm -hmm. How many of them have you trained or put through workouts this summer? Like, yeah. What's the list? Do you even know off the top of your head? So, Fred, you may have to help me with this. So I, I think this year we have had seven guys that will get selected that we've helped somewhere along the way in, in, in the development. So you have uh, Nick Smith from the University of Arkansas. You have uh, Jordan Walsh, Anthony Black, Keontae George, uh, Marcus Sasser, um, Drew Timmy, um, Ricky Council. Uh, I'm missing a few. Jalen Wilson. Um, who else? At this point, we just don't even know how many guys. It's just a lot of kids that ended up making it. So, um, but yeah, I think we have about seven guys in this year's draft, excluding Victor. Four years ago, that would mm -hmm. be to you what a ridiculous accomplishment. Yeah, that if you would have told me four years ago that we would have had like six or seven guys in the draft, that would be just absurd. I'd just be like, you, you're lying. That's not going to happen. And so that is a surreal moment. That hasn't hit me yet. I don't think it'll hit me until I'm in New York and I'm seeing all the families and friends and, and stuff like that. But uh, this, is, this has been the biggest year of my life, um, not just from a career standpoint, but it's been challenging off the court because you got to level up. You know, and I always say new levels, new devils. So it's, it's been challenging, but it's, you got to just stick with it. You got to get better, man. Well, yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to tell me on camera, Mm -hmm. But there seems to be some hinting that there could be a new opportunity or another opportunity headed your way. Are you able to talk about that publicly? Uh, not too much publicly, but I could kind of dance around it a little okay. bit. Dance. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think in the near future, um, you know, uh, I would have an opportunity to fulfill my dreams of coaching in the NBA. But I think, you know, going back to the whole patience thing, you just got to keep working. So I don't, I don't allow that to, to dictate what we're trying to build here in the city of Dallas and, and still helping a lot of these kids in the community. Um, you know, we've been fortunate enough, we got people all over the world flying in to, to work out with us. And 
that's always a blessing in itself. And, and I've found, found true happiness in that because it, it is our purpose. You know, it's not about us, it's about helping others. And when you see these kids reach a pinnacle that is unheard of, it's like winning the lottery almost every year. You know, literally you, kids getting selected in the lottery, walking across the stage is, is just so profound that I'll, it'll never get old. So whatever happens for, for me in my future is gonna happen. And I'm a, I'm a firm believer that it's already written. So whatever the cards will be, you know, I just got to keep working. How's Twin? He's doing good. Yeah. So he, he loves his Fortnite. <laughs> He's a huge Fortnite fanatic. So we got to get him on the Speaking e. Speaking of stuff that I have no idea. About. Yeah, we got to get him on the e gaming team. But he's doing good. He's 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 uh, developing in his own right. And he's now he's starting to ask questions about you know left hand layups or step back threes or whatever the case is. So it's uh, it's been a great great uh, time just having him in the gym as well. Best year, you said it was the best year of your life? Yeah. What about it? Why? Man, I think this has been the best year just because I've been able to share a lot of experiences with like my cousin Fred, um, with my son, and it's been more meaningful um, than ever before because I'm, I'm more mature than I ever have been before. So I'm able to process things differently. And I think uh, just with my internal growth, uh, just acceptance. I've, I've learned a lot about acceptance and the value of what that means and stress level, all that kind of stuff, what comes with this job. You know, it may be shiny on the outside, but it's a lot of work to have to constantly motivate coaches, constantly motivate individuals to strive for their dreams. Um, so I've learned a great sense of balance through acceptance and it's, it's helped me just really enjoy and be more present um, throughout this whole experience. Awesome, anything else you wanna add? Are we gonna see Vic in a cowboy hat? What's going on? Yeah, he's definitely, he's gonna have some cowboy boots and cowboy hat. We'll get him some steel toes, you know, get him on a couple horses or something like that.